can start by talking about this website, Have I Been Pwned, P W N, Have I Been Pwned dot com. Um, hopefully, some of you uh, may have heard of that. Um, but it is a site that compiles um, breaches, account breaches from really large. Um, uh, sites and it tries to be a useful reference for for people to know if your account's been compromised somewhere. Um, I don't know exactly how they get all the data, but I think you know when it's out in the black market um, after a little bit, someone will will send it um, send it over and share it. Uh, there's one guy Troy Hunt who's the main person behind this website, and um, there's a few different things you can do with it. Um, the the most obvious thing is type your own. Uh, email address in here and see if it's been pwned, uh, if anyone's uh, breached it somewhere. And looking at my own email address here, uh, Adobe had a breach in 2013, Apollo, and see, I've never even heard of Apollo, but it's some um, sales engagement startup had a copy of my email address. Um, so first of all, I would recommend check this out. You can uh, subscribe to get notifications when they become aware of a new breach that contains your email address that can notify you. Um, now that's all well and good, but the primary aspect of this so far is by email address. Um, but the problem is not all breaches get reported to this site. Um, obviously, if someone uh, attacks and gets a copy of, of some website's uh, database and can break some of the passwords, um, they're gonna hold on to that and not, not let people know. Um, and what folks often are doing, a common attack nowadays is called credential stuffing. And that is, um, you know, maybe my, you know, Adobe account was compromised back in 2013 I should change my Adobe password, sure, but that's just the beginning. What people, if someone has a copy of the Adobe usernames and passwords, they're gonna try that username and password on every other site on the internet. Can you get into my Gmail with the same username and password that I had um, on the Adobe website? Can you get into GitHub, SourceForge, Yahoo, Flickr, you know, Netflix, Amazon, you know, you name it, and a lot of people use the same password across multiple sites, right? Um, so what do you do about that? And I'm gonna talk both about what you can do about that as an individual user or, you know, help your friends and family. And also if you run a website or a service, what can you do about that to help protect all of your users? Feel free to jump in if you have questions as well. Um, so the first thing that we can do is still on the Have I Been Pwned website is they have a password-based lookup um, for passwords. And this is independent of any email address or account. So if I type in, you know, foo bar, and check, has the password foobar ever been used? Well, it's shown up in 12,000 12, different accounts from the various breaches they have compiled. Obviously, foobar is not a very secure uh, password. It is, lots of people are gonna have that. Um, but what this can let you do is discover, has your password, which you think maybe is fairly unique and safe, has it ever been breached somewhere else? You could also run into a collision of like maybe somebody else used that password uh, somewhere else. You know, someone not you had that password, and maybe that's fine, but maybe that's not. If if, the, if someone else has the same password, A B C one two three nine two two, maybe maybe you didn't generate a very random uh, interesting password if someone else used the same password. Um, but you may ask, do I really want to be typing all my uh, passwords, my secure, hopefully secure passwords into this website to see if they've been exposed or not? And so there's some interesting um, 
approaches they do here. Um, we can look here, this is the dev tools, and we can see the request that was made. Um, if they did not submit the password directly uh, in this form, some JavaScript ran, and the they hit an API, and the only thing they sent across essentially was 8843D. So what does that mean? Um, there's a approach here that has been named K anon anonym and K K anonym anonymity. That's hard to say. I don't know what the K stands for, but the anonymity is the important uh, part in this approach. So what what's happening is you take the password and you make a SHA-1 hash of it, which is basically a one-way conversion. And so, first of all, you can't easily undo that. And then second of all, the API request only sends the first five characters of that hash over the network to this uh, website, this API. And then the response comes back with um, potentially hundreds of the full hashes that finish that um, hash. So this one, can't quite see it right now. So we sent over 8843D, but then the full hash of my particular password is one of these in the hundreds of responses. And so if someone intercepted this request, or even if um, someone's monitoring uh, the Have I Been Phoned website and looking at the, all the requests, they don't see the hashes of the passwords. They only see the beginning of a hash of a password. And then when this response comes back, you can check and see, was your entry in here? If this, you know, this, there's a really long, you know, continuation of the hash, and you can see if that was in one breach or two breaches or five, or maybe it's not in the results at all. Um, and so that's a fairly secure and privacy preserving way to um, send a bit of a hash of a password and then check against all the responses that come back. And normally there, I believe there's, yeah, several hundred requests, uh, re responses in each request. So even though we're sending a little bit of a hash of a password, you know, there's 500 some um, responses that, that could be uh, the one that matches to my password. And only I know which uh, value among these hundreds in the response is my password. Um, now, this is not just a form you can type into, um, but it is a API service that um, anyone can use. Um, I'm gonna show you my password manager. Um, I don't think any of the passwords are showing up here. Um, if we, so this password manager is called KeePass XC. It's a, um, KeePass was a very popular password manager, and I think the Windows development might still be going on, but KeePass XC is kind of a successor that, that um, a lot more people have been developing on and working on as cross-platform and stuff. Um, so this is just a local password manager. And if I go to database reports, um, it has a have I been pwned, H-I-B-P, um, have I been pwned report that I can run. And this will go through all the passwords in my password manager and tell me which ones uh, have been exposed in that list. And sometimes, you know, I have quite a few results here. A number of them are, you know, a PIN number. Well, yeah, one, two, three, four, or whatever my PIN, any sort of good PIN number, if it's only four or five, six digits, is probably gonna be there, but that's not what PIN numbers are about. Um, so there's quite a few here that maybe I should double check, um, but this is a useful tool um, to, to kind of run that check against all your passwords at once and identify, you know, which of your passwords you might really want to consider changing. Um, the other thing, which is kind of um, obvious, and I know people have said for a long time, 
use different passwords on every website. Well, I know a lot of us don't do that. I know I didn't do that for a long time until I started um, seeing this in action and realizing the ramifications of it. Um, this, this password database that I have in KeePass, I've had for a long time, but it really was just to help me remember the five or 10 variations of passwords that I use on different sites. And I really didn't go the full length of having a different password for every single website. But in the past year I have been, and so um, I would encourage everyone, whether you use a tool like KeePass, um, which is an open source local uh, database file, or use one of the more popular online ones like 1Password or LastPass. Um, I've not, I use LastPass at work, Seems okay. Uh, one password I'm not familiar with, so I can't really recommend which password manager you should use. But I would say <laughs> take a start. If you're not using a password manager, start using it. And if you if you really set it up right, so that it's you know hooked up with your browser, so it can just fill in passwords for you, then it's really easy to make a new password on every single website. And I don't know what my passwords are. They're like 10, 20 characters long, full of random garbage. The few times I have to type them in by hand, it's a pain. <laughs> and the password manager just fills it out automatically for me, so I don't have to worry about it. And I have a unique password across every site. So if openstreetmap.org gets hacked, well, that password is not used anywhere else, and I have no risk of my Google login or Amazon login or whatever. Um, being compromised. Um, if you are interested in KeePass XC, I would recommend um, that it, it's pretty useful, but one of the downsides is that it's local. Um, I guess that's a pro and a con, right? It's I like it because it's local. I don't have to trust some company like 1Password or LastPass having a copy of all my passwords, even if they say it's encrypted and super secure, right? This file is on my machine. Um, now, that does mean if you want to log into something on your phone or a different computer, you'll need to get the password there as well. So what I do is um, if you use a local tool like KeePass, you can save your password file on uh, something like iCloud Drive or Google Drive. Now that, of course, is trusting Apple or Google with their drive, but the password file itself is encrypted. Um, and, you know, I think it's a little easier jump to, to trust that no one's going to um, compromise that file as opposed to a password manager service. Um, nonetheless, online services like LastPass are super easy and convenient. Um, one other tool that I would recommend, uh, especially if you use Chrome, is uh, a tool called Pass Protect. It's an extension uh, for Chrome. And it uses the same approach I showed with Have I Been Pwned, where it uses the K anonymity to only set, check a bit of your password. Um, and it basically runs on all websites. So you do have to, you know, you have, have to have a certain amount of trust there. But I've used it a little bit, and it will basically watch every time you're logging in. And as you log in, it will warn you, oh, this password has been in 500, you know, breached accounts. And that can be useful because maybe you don't have all your passwords in a password manager right now. Maybe just Chrome has them saved in Chrome, and that's it. Um, so Pass Protect um, is useful. Now, switching gears a little bit. Um, I also want to talk about not only you as an individual, but if you run a, a website or some sort of service, you want to protect all your users, right? Um, I work at SourceForge. We've got lots of users over, over many decades uh, with usernames and passwords on SourceForge. And we want to, we, we've seen attacks like this where people just try logging in with passwords that have been reused from other places. So what can you do um, about that? Um, this 
API is publicly available. So um, we've written code that checks passwords against that. Um, there also is a uh, online database, or sorry, not an online, but a, a database you can download to be offline if you don't want to send passwords across the network at all, right? So we check people's passwords against that database. And of course, we have everyone's password encrypted in the first place, so we cannot proactively go and check everybody's password. But when you log in, we, that's the one opportunity where we actually know what your password is, and so we can check it um, using this K anonymity approach and against the, data, the database to see has this password been in a breach somewhere. Then we do some additional checks based on things like is this user um, a member of any uh, an admin uh, to any degree? Is this user logging in from an IP address that's known previously? Um, or a completely new IP address. So there's a lot of heuristics and extra logic you can put around this, but at the heart of it, basically, we have it set up. So if someone logs in with a password that's been in a compromise somewhere out there, we just say this password, you know, doesn't seem to be safe and needs to be reset and then require someone to require them to reset their password then. Um, and so I would encourage similar approaches for anyone uh, running a website uh, of any size. I did a check a bit before this and um, WordPress being a really um, you know, popular website system, I checked WordPress does have a few plugins that uh, use the Have I Been Pwned service. None of those extensions seem really popular. So you know, do your own research and check it out, um, see what looks worthwhile or, or maybe write some custom code like we did at SourceForge. Um, and um, I guess one other thing, both at an organization level and a personal level is setting up two-factor authentication obviously is uh, very good and recommended and, and supporting that on your own websites is good because then if someone does uh, manage to discover someone's password and maybe on the 8,000th attempt they get in, um, they won't be able to get fully into someone's account unless the uh, two-factor authentication, um, uh, they can't get into the account if two-factor authentication is there. So um, that obviously is another very good thing to do on any important system. Uh, I've got probably like 20 or 30 different two-factor codes set up on my phone. One more thing worth mentioning with that, make sure you save your backups, um, backup codes in a safe place because if you lose your phone or you know, falls in uh, the, uh, out the car and you lose it or it gets broken or something, some websites will not let you, you know, reset your two-factor authentication for good for reasons. So uh, you can get locked out there. Um, I think that covers uh, all the different facets uh, of this Have I Been Pwned service. There's a few other services that I've looked into um, to see if there's other sites like Have I Been Pwned. Um, and there are a few out there, but I can't even remember what they're called because um, they seemed fairly limited or um, pay to use. And Have I Been Pwned is, seems to be the de facto standard for this, that uh, any breach that gets publicized the the hashed passwords and so on end up you know getting uh, to this database and it's publicly available with no rate limits so it's a real really useful service to the public. Um, I think that's it. So um, I'll uh, open it up to any questions that people might have. Look in the chat here. Can't see the chat. Any preferred 2FA tools? Um, I use one called Duo Mobile. Um, Duo Mobile, um, I use primarily because it has a push feature that some sites integrate with, um, and what we use at work integrates with that. So um, instead of typing in a code, the service can send a push to that app and I just say approve. So that's pretty nice. Um, 
a limited number of sites um, support that. I think that really is more uh, corporate sites that have things like that set up. But Duo Mobile supports your traditional two-factor auth and it works really well. Um, Google Authenticator is probably the most common one. I think Authy, A-U-T-H-Y is another common one and offers a cloud backup. I don't know if Google Authenticator offers a cloud backup, but that's another recommendation as well if you don't want to worry about your backup codes being printed off on a piece of paper or something like that in case your phone is lost, it is something like Authy or Duo Mobile offers a cloud backup. Again, you gotta trust somebody then if they're gonna keep <laughs> your backup code safe. Um, another thing that's interesting, when you set up two-factor authentication, there's that QR code. Um, you can save that QR code. It really it just um, presents a, a, a number. Um, so you can save that QR code you can put that QR code on multiple devices and they will all generate the same sequence. They're all, those sequences are based off 30 second time windows and that original number in the QR code. So you can uh, save the QR code, you can share that QR code if you want multiple people or multiple devices to be able to use it. Um, have I ever used YubiKey? Um, I've got one of these ones from a few years back, there's dust on it. Um, I played around with this a little bit, um, but I have not done much with it. Um, U2F is the protocol um, behind it, and more and more sites are gaining support for it. I'm not an expert on it by any means, but I guess my general impression is um, even websites that do support it often support other me methods of authentication. And so every time you add another method of authentication in case you don't have your little physical key, well, you actually now have two ways to log in. So is it more secure to have two ways to authenticate yourself or just one? Um, so I don't know, that's, that's debatable perhaps. Um, probably most useful in like a corporate environment where you can enforce everyone uses uh, the physical key but for a, a public website, like I think GitHub supports it and stuff, you know, they also let you authenticate with phone or two-factor authentication. And if you have all three of those set up as your second factor, well, the, the weakest link in the chain is still the, the weakest vulnerability there. Dave, what do you think about um memorable passwords or password patterns that might be mm. different for each website but are similar in the pattern. Yeah, that's what I did for a long time. I had a, a mental pattern where given the name of a website, I had a mini algorithm, you know, where I could, you know, just for example, take the second letter of the website and then the third letter of the website and, you know, add or subtract or, you know, you know, think of a, a state or a country, you know, that starts with that letter, things like that. Um, and those served me well for quite a while to think of useful, unique passwords. Um, but I've stopped using that since I used a password manager to um, keep track of everything. It started to break down a little bit where I would get so many of those, it'd be hard to remember. And some websites would require longer passwords than I had been using my little algorithm generated. So I had to remember, oh yeah, this website needs a different version. And so it just kind of, wasn't quite good enough for what I found I needed, but still a useful, useful tool, I think. There are some um, password manager tools that, that basically do that for you. That if you're logging into Amazon, it'll look at amazon.com and generate, use that as the seed for an algorithm. Um, and that's interesting. Then there's no database to like store your passwords. You just remember like your master password and that gets fed into the algorithm with amazon.com and it spits out a really long complex thing and doesn't have to store that long complex password. But the downside there is what if you have to change your password on Amazon? Well, then you need to know, you have to toggle in that password manager, like some toggle some flag to say, all right, give me the second version of a password for Amazon. I have to always remember, Amazon's on the second password. <laughs> Thanks. Mm 